We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we thank Him for His countless bounties and gifts upon us. And we testify that there is nothing worthy of worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we bear witness to the finality of the prophethood of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Whoever Allah guides, no one can send astray. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one else can guide. I remind myself and all of you with me to have taqwa, to have weariness and consciousness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our private and public affairs. For indeed, fear of Allah is the pinnacle of wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran one of the purposes of life. In the verse which many of you will be familiar with, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Mulk, تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكُ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْغَفُورُ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that one of the purposes of the life that He created for us here, this temporal world, is to try us, is to test us, so that He can see which of us is best in deeds, لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ And so here we know that this is دَارُ بَلَاء that this is the abode of trial and tribulation. But within it is imtizaj, there is differences. And our states go between states of ease and states of difficulty. And our responses to each of these prospective states will tell us something about our spiritual states. The great uh, Yemeni Mujaddid, Imam al-Haddad, says in Fusul al hakmi he talks about the various vicissitudes of life and the responses of one who has taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who has a state of ihsan with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the one who is of the world and distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The opposite of that would be someone who is of the dunya. <laughs> and he begins with the state of poverty, something that we would all deem to be a difficulty in this world. But he talks about the person of taqwa. What is their behavior when they're in difficulty? That the person of taqwa, when they are in a state of poverty, they're grateful for the little that they have. That they are patient with the affair of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That they are content, that they accept this decree from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That they will conceal their situation. That you would, had you not known, you would think them to be in a better state because of their, because of their iffah. That this is the state of taqwa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of their contentment, because of their patience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them nearness to Him. And in this very same set of circumstances, if, an, if it is a, a worldly and corrupt and immoral person, they will complain, they will find fault with the situation, they will see others who have wealth and say, why him and not me? And they will be ridiculed by people for their state. So it's the same situation, one is a heart filled with taqwa and another only sees dunya. And the inverse is also true, in a state of wealth. The person of taqwa in a state of wealth knows that it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They see this as a means to help others who are less fortunate. That they, they, they do nafaqa, they spend from their, from their wealth in order to help others. And they see it as a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, the one thing you will be asked about twice on the Day of Judgment is wealth. Where did you get it from and how did you spend it? Both how it came in and how you used it. And they will be aware of this because of their taqwa. And people will pray for this person. They'll say, this is a righteous person of wealth who helps so many people. But the same circumstances, if they were given to a person distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would see that it would increase them in arrogance. And this is one of the <coughs> descriptions Allah gives for one of the great kuffar in Surah Al-A'la, uh, uh, in Surah uh, uh, Iqra, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, أَرَأَيْتَ الَّذِي اسْتَغْنَى That he thought himself to be self-sufficient. And this is what wealth will do to the corrupt person. They will see it as from themselves, that they are deserving of it, and they will hoard it because they think that it comes from themselves. And people will see them and say, what a stingy miser as a result. And so here is a reminder to us 
that in all of these various stages of life, whether in poverty or in wealth, and this can be applied for the sick person and the healthy person. This can be applied in so many things. One can be, when you're healthy, you're in a state of gratitude. You use it in order to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the wretched person will use it simply to complain and say, why do I have this tribulation? Sayyidina Ayyub alayhi salam is the epitome of contentment with illness. <coughs> and we are, we are encouraged in that to see the lesson. People told him, maybe this is a punishment from your Lord. They tried to encourage him to complain. And this is a human tendency. We see misery loves company, we say, because we love to complain to one another. And that when you have somebody tells you, oh, no, you should complain. Very easy pitfall. But Sayyidina Ayyub salam, saw it as coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in health. So all of these come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the criterion that distinguishes this? Taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we know that these changes come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will know the requisite response. Imam al-Ghazali has in his famous Ahya Ulum al deen something which the title alone will teach you something. He talks about Kitab al tawheed wa Tawakkul. That the book of Tawheed, knowing the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Tawakkul, because they cannot be separated. Why? The ulama talk about we, many of us, most all of us as Muslims have theological tawheed. Nobody here would ascribe to more than one Lord. But why hasn't that tawheed penetrated us in a spiritual state? Why does even a believer steal? If you, if you were to catch a Muslim thief, why did you steal? Don't you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote you your risk? Yes, I know that he wrote me my risk. Do you think stealing will increase your risk? No, technically, I know it doesn't increase my risk. Why then does this person steal? Why then do we fear of our risk? Because it has, the meanings have not penetrated our heart. And so if we, if we want to succeed in these tests that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting forth in our lives, we must grow in taqwa through increasing our certainty of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and increasing in tawakkul. Seeing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he told Sayyidina Mu'ad, <laughs> In the famous hadith that's, that's also in the 40 hadith of Imam al-Nawawi, that in ijtama'at al-ummah, ala an yanfa'uka bi shayin ma katabah Allah lak, fala yanfa'uk. That if all of the mankind, ins and jinn, were to gather to bring you a benefit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not write for you, that would not befall you. And if they all conspired to bring you a harm, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not write for you, they could not bring it for you. Right? The pens have been lifted and the ink has dried. So when we know our state is determined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we have to have taqwa in all of our states. We have to have taqwa in all of our states. There's another famous hadith in which the Prophet says, Fear Allah in whatever situation you are in. Right? So, sickness, health, wealth, poverty, all of these states have a requisite form of taqwa, an expression of taqwa there. And follow up the, 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 the sin with the good deed, it will erase it. Here the Prophet is giving us a very comprehensive piece of advice that we should have taqwa of Allah regardless of the situation. When we fall short, He reminds us. Follow up the bad deed with a good one and it will erase it. We all will fall short in these states. But we have to look internally. We cannot blame the states. If I only had this, if I only had this job, if I only got this promotion, if only my health were better, if only I were Married, if only I had this. All of us, Allah put, puts us through different difficulties. But He tells us, That this is the very purpose of our life here on earth. And what we are responsible for is not the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but our response therein. One of the six objects of faith that are laid out in multiple places, both in the Quran and the Hadith, etc., is the our belief in Qadr. Allah's decree is measuring out what each of us gets. We are not responsible for what we get. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar-razzaq. He gives out what He wills. 
Each of us must ask ourselves, what is my state of contentment? What is my state of gratitude? What is my state of using the bounties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me in a way that shows this gratitude? And where, how am I living and seeing all of the aspects in my life as coming from the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When I, when I get fired, do I see that as coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When I get promoted, do I see that as coming from myself? Or do I see that as coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The Prophet asked Sayyidina Ibn Abbas, do you, are you balanced? And he said, what do you mean, Ya Rasulullah? And he said, are people's blame and praise the same to you? Are they equal in your eyes? Because if you're connected to your Lord, people's praise, you know they're not praising you. Like many of the scholars said, you're praising the veiling that Allah has veiled my faults. Someone praises me, I know it's that Allah has veiled my faults. And if somebody censors you, it's your own nafs. And so that shouldn't bother you if you're connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who evaluate ourselves and our relationship with Him and place taqwa central therein. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala nabihi mustafa, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayh. So we're talking about the abode of dunya being a place of trial and tribulation, and also of bounties and gifts, and that our response therein is indicative of our spiritual states with our Lord. There is a great summary of these states that was given uh, near, by Sayyidina Abu al-Abbas al-Mursi. He was sitting in a majlis, and he gave a great summation of all of human states. Each of us, everyone in this room, everyone in the world, all of their states can be summarized, summed up into four states. You are, we are either in a state of ni'mah, of bounty, or we're in a state of difficulty. That's it. State of bounty, or ease, and a state of difficulty. Or we're in a state of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or we fall into a state of disobedience. If you can see all of the vicissitudes of this world in this matrix of four possible states, you will then know what it is that you're up against. And then Abu Abbas al Mursi then went on to describe that each of these states has a requisite response. So imagine a doctor telling you, if this symptom arises, take this medication. But if you get this symptom, take this medication. That's a, that's, that's, that's a, and these, these are the only possible scenarios. And he said that if you are in a state of, of ease and bounty, then you must be in a state of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shukr. So each of us can look at our lives and find areas, alhamdulillah, of immense bounty. Particularly where we live in this country, everybody has difficulty. But alhamdulillah, on average, many of us have immense bounty. What you do, you don't feel guilty about that bounty. He says you show gratitude for that bounty. And for those that are in a state of difficulty, simply requires patience. Patience. And there's a difference in Arabic, the scholars talk about there's a difference between sabr and tahammul, right? Dealing with it is different than patience, right? So they'll say in Arabic, like a donkey bears, bears a burden, but you don't call a donkey patient. Patience is to take is to bear the difficulty with grace, with contentment, right? There's a famous hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ saw a woman who was standing over the grave of her son and she was weeping, and the Prophet ﷺ told, told her, Isbiri, be patient. She didn't realize it was the Prophet ﷺ, and she basically told him, leave me alone, you don't know this difficulty that I'm in. And afterwards they told her, do you know who that was? That was the Prophet And she was, in a, she scurried over immediately in, in, in a state to come to the Prophet and to apologize. And he taught her, and all of us along with her, that inna sabra inda sadmat al That if patience, truly patience, is when the affliction first strikes. When affliction first strikes. Everybody can catch their 
get their bearings later. Everybody can collect themselves weeks later. But when the calamity first hits, to know that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be firm and patient. Doesn't mean that, that there's no sadness. Doesn't mean that you don't find it difficult, right? But that there's a grace in knowing that this is from my Lord and I, and I will stand and bear this patiently. For the state of, of being in a state of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one must have shuhud al minna to see Allah's favor upon you. <laughs> to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favor upon you. That we don't grow in arrogance to say, I pray, I fast, I do whatever state of obedience we find ourselves in, to remind ourselves, like we begin every khutbah, whoever Allah guides, no one can send astray. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. So we have to see Allah's favor upon us. And if we're in a state of disobedience, then we make tawbah, repentance, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of our lives, all of our ups and downs, good times and bad times, Right? All of our sins, all of our prayers, all of our fasting, all of, everything can be seen through the lens of these four. And if we follow the appropriate response, then we will be okay with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he says, in shakartum na izidannakum. If you're grateful, then I will increase you. And we know the promises for those who are patient, particularly with taqwa. Whoever has taqwa of Allah, Allah will give him a way out, will create for him a way out and give him sustenance from whence he knows not. And if we see Allah's favor upon us, we will, we will not grow in arrogance and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide us further. And if we make tawbah, the one who makes tawbah from a sin is like the one who has not sinned. And so these are the states that are given to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Give us the wisdom to look at our own lives introspectively and to show gratitude for what we should be grateful for, to be patient with those things that are difficult. May he give us the ability to witness his favor upon us gathering here in this Jum'ah now. And may he make us true in our repentance for those errors in, in, in which we fall short. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yi salluna ala nabi ya ayya nadina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد O oh Allah, send your sublime blessings and salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad, his family and companions and upon the one who believed even when things seemed bleak his companion in the cave, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and upon the mighty companion martyred in the mihrab standing clearly for the truth, Umar bin al-Khattab, and upon the one who took two lights by the hand, he even made the angels shire, Uthman ibn Affan, and upon his beloved cousin, the gate to the city of knowledge, the courageous and wise, Ali ibn Abi Talib, and upon Hassan and Hussein, the princes of paradise, and upon their pure mother Fatima, and ours, Khadija the wise, and upon Aisha, Hamza, and Abbas, we ask the same, those who pledged, and at Badr and Uhud they came, and upon all of the prophets, noble companions, and all of those who follow until the day of standing. Allahumma salli ala islam al muslimin wa adil al-shirk wa al-mushrikeen wa dhammar a'da'ana a'da'a al-deen Allahumma ahdina fi man hadayt wa aafina fi man aafayt Allahumma aftir lana dhunubana wa kathir anna sayyatina wa tuwafna ma'a al-abrar Allahumma thabbitna ala deenik ya rahman rahimin ya muqallib al-khulub thabbit khulubana ala deenik Allahumma rizqna ta'atika Allahumma rizqna min khashiyatika ma ta'hulu bihi baynana wa bayna ma'asi ومن طاعتك ما تحول ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما يهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا في أسماعنا وأبصارنا دائما بقوتنا دائما ما أحيتنا oh Allah we ask you to grant us success in our affairs grant those who have difficulty with great ease and forgive them their sins and elevate all of our stations and nearness to you and grant us a true repentance before our final days إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر البغي يا عدكم لعلكم تذكرون ونذكر الله أكبر الله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقيم الصلاة